and I'm Jay Kirby, host of the Curbside Podcast. Thank you again for joining me. Uh, this week, we have an absolute honor, an absolute hero to the show, uh, Deborah Phillips, a.k.a. the Yellow Time Force Ranger, uh, <laughs> here with us. Thank you so much for joining me, Deborah. It is an absolute honor and pleasure. Oh, wow. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure, pleasure to just be here. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but as always, uh, like the show on Facebook, follow us on uh, all our social media, and shout out to our sponsors, Raise Energy, available at repsports.com. Use that promo code CURBSIDE8 at checkout for a special little discount. Uh, and check out our partners, Collected Comics, here in the Fort Worth area. They have three locations. Uh, go give them your business because they are wonderful stores. They've got some great comics, uh, some great collectibles, and can't can't say enough good things about uh, Collected. So go check them out. And, of course, check out Dice Hard with a Vengeance uh, every other Saturday on our Twitch channel. So with that, we'll get to the the woman of the hour, uh, oh Yellow my. Time Force Ranger, Kate Walker, a.k.a. Deborah Phillips, once oh. again, thank you. Thank you so much. This means oh. the absolute world. This is so much fun, and it just blows my mind. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> me? Little me? <laughs> No, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me, really. This is always so much fun to chat about my glory years. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's an absolute honor to have have you on the show. Um, and I, I always, I got to start off with the easy question that I always ask anytime anyone comes on. How did you get your start? How did you go from just a regular old person to being a Power mm -hmm. Ranger on TV and oh. at one of, you know, personally, my favorite seasons at that. Oh, that is so sweet. Um, wow. It's so funny because I'm still just a regular old person, like literally. Um, but um, no, um, I guess I, I for those that have heard this story. Um, yeah, like I've always, I think, secretly have been like an entertainer just as a child. Um, I, I loved making people laugh and just very animated personality. But never would I ever have the guts to do that in front of like a crowd of people or anything like that. So it was never something that I was pursuing as a child. Um, but, and I, you know, I went through my awkward years in like junior high and high school, worst years ever. Um, I was the girl that just, you know, didn't get involved in anything, um, didn't go to dances or parties or yeah, I was just the girl that just sometimes I wondered if people even knew I was there. Like I was just one of those just but whenever there would be plays or anything at school, I would get like these chills and goosebumps like, oh, man, I wish I could do that. Or I wish I was, you know, had the courage to be in front of all those people and just like the energy like I felt it in me, but I just was nope, st stayed away from it. And it wasn't until after high school I was taking some college classes and there was a class for acting in television or acting on television. And I was like, let me try this. Let me just go and just put my little toe in there. And I loved it. It was like, oh my gosh, I get to transform and like be somebody else. And this person that I become is brave, not me, you know, somebody else. And I really started to realize like, I think I kind of like, you know, you know, maybe acting is my thing, but I was still very scared to like attempt to do it on my own. So um, that's when I dabbled with like being an extra on in the TV and the movies. And I loved it. You know, there were a lot of other extras that kind of, uh, you know, like people will kind of put negative, like, I don't know, they would feel that, I don't know, there was just this uh, tension among some extras that would find things that were wrong about being an extra, but I loved it. Like to me, I was just like, I would study the actors that were the principal actors and I would just really um, enjoy the process and the directors. Like I was really learning and paying attention. And that's when I started to get a little brave and um, I went up for like trying to get an agent, got some pictures. Um, 
And I found an agent who had faith in me and were throwing me into like all these auditions for like commercials. And I was terrible. Like I wasn't getting any callbacks. Like it was, I was kind of like, are they going to want me for the next year? Like, do they want me to sign this again? And so they, they recommended here, take some workshop classes or whatever. And so I did that. And um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed like breaking out of my shell and just kind of like becoming somebody else in front of other people. And it helped me. I started getting callbacks. And then next thing you know, I started booking one-liners, you know, little commercial, little ads here and there. And that's when I got the, um, the theatrical department reached out and they're like, Hey, would you like to audition for Power Rangers? And I got nervous because I was like, Oh no, no, no. Like I'm not ready to like lead on a show. Like I'm good with the one-liners here and there. Like I'm not trying to be known that was never my thing. Like I, it would be great to be known for something, but I, it, that scared me. Like anything that became too much was like the, the thought of it just overwhelmed me. I, I, I don't like attention like that. And so I wasn't ready. So I passed the opportunity and that actually would have been um, light speed rescue. Um, so um, it, it kind of worked out for me. Okay. <laughs> like, so I was like I wasn't ready for that. And so then a whole year went by. And they came back around and it was on my birthday, I remember. Um, and it was like the audition. I was like, okay, this audition on my birthday. Okay, whatever. Loved the character. And of course, they just kind of gave a random character for Katie. Um, it was just this bubbly personality, very similar to me. So I made it my own and went in there confidently. It was such a well-organized um, audition. Um, Iris um, was the casting director and she was so lovely and just made me feel safe and comfortable. And I read with her. She was just so wonderful to read for because I hadn't really auditioned for like a leading role ever. Like that was the first time. And it was great. Like there was no one really there. It was just me. I didn't see my competition. It was like just me, Iris, the person doing the camera. And I did it and she was just so sweet. And she was like, you know, I will be seeing you. And I'm like, okay. And then I don't hear back for like a month. And I'm like, uh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> that wasn't for me. Um, so month rolls around and I get my agents like, Hey, you have an audition for Power Rangers. Not a, they didn't say callback. They just said an audition. So I'm like, okay. I read the sides and it was the same audition. I'm like, Oh, they haven't found their person. Meantime, I am not aware that this is for an actual Power Ranger. I think this is like a one-liner. It wasn't very clear. So I'm like, okay, guest star, co-star, you know, that's kind of what I was used to. And so I auditioned again. This time there were the director, there was a, a, a panel of judges. It was like American Idol. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but good old Iris, you know, I see her, her sweet, comforting smile. And I'm just like, okay, let me just focus on her. And I do the audition the same way. There, there was no reaction from the other folks. I was like, mm. they asked me how tall I was. They, they were very curious. And um, I, it, I always found this to be really interesting because I, um, the only thing they told me to prepare for the audition was wear form fitting clothes. Like they wanted to see, I guess, our body type. And I had like these tall, like platform boots. I'm so glad I made the right choices, but I did have army pants on, which I had no idea um, that time Rangers what, yellow also had army what, pants. Like I did not. That was going to be your look that, for the next <laughs> season. The yellow is, shirt and the, the camel. Right. Pants. Like who would have thought, right. I, had a, I did have a black shirt on, but I did have army pants. I had like these combat boots that had like height to it. And I remember just being asked, like, how tall are you? And I'm like, about 5'8", but six foot with the shoes. <laughs> They're all like looking at me. There's no reaction. I'm like, oh, gosh, they hate me. And then um, didn't hear back for another month. I was like, oh. And so then I get a call back again. Same thing. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? So now at this point, I'm confident. I know the, the script by heart, the, the sides. And um, I go another go. This happened like four times. And so finally, I was going out of town. I think I was filming like a Chiquita banana commercial or something random. And I got this call saying, you um, need to come down to, to sign some contracts for Power Rangers because you are up for, they made a mistake. They said the Pink Ranger. I know that's not true. I mean, well, then again, I don't know what they were looking for, but they knew I was up for one of the Rangers. So I go and I signed this long contract. I don't know what I was signing. I was just excited. I'm like, I have a job. I'm a working actor. This is crazy. 
And so I'm signing my life away and um, my rights and everything else, whatever. And so they were like, uh, this doesn't mean you have it. You have to test the network. Didn't know what that meant. So, okay. Um, so I'm confident at this point. I've done this same audition like four times. And this is the one time they decided to flip the script and turn it into a completely different character, which I'm now realizing was the Jen character. Um, it was more serious. There was a, it was like these sides were nothing, like they were not the Katie Jen, like all these characters that they had us read were random auditions. Like none of them made it to the show, but this character, they lost their father. There was, it was a very dramatic shift to this particular character versus the one I was used to. So I could see they were looking for range and I'm like, okay. I had a day to kind of learn it and I just went for it. And this time I went in and it was the, the place was packed with actors everywhere. And for any actor out there that's intimidated by the process, like you have to go in with your confidence and like what you know, don't change what you're going to do because you see somebody else looking a different way or making a different choice. It's going to mess you up. So I had to learn to just kind of like, take you know ignore all of the things that I that were distracting like I saw people dressed like they were from the future I was like oh that's a good choice <laughs> I saw people dressed like just random things that were like oh they're totally gonna get it like oh like just feeling doubts everywhere and um at this audition I did see among all the people I saw Aaron I saw Jason Michael Kevin I saw everybody that ended up making it um, and it, it, that's a random among a whole room filled with other actors. I did encounter my cast. Um, and so when I went into the audition again, same scenario, I did the best I could. It was a very serious scene. So I didn't know what they were looking for. And after I was done and after like, they told us all to hang around and it, the place was just filled with people like American Idol, like no joke. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when uh, Iris or someone came out and they're like, okay, if we call your name, um, you, what did they say? I can't remember if it was, they called the name you stay, or if you don't hear your name stay, I can't remember, but there was an elimination and a whole bunch of people left and I got to stay. And at this point, I remember I was uh, chatting with Kevin, Michael, Kevin and Michael, and we were just, the three of us kind of were like chatting with each other. We kind of clicked um, I ran into Aaron here and there. Um, I did see Jason. He was very focused. Um, Aaron was so sweet. She was so friendly. I remember that. Um, and then they had us come in for a cold reading or they told us the girls were going to read what the guys were reading and the guys were going to read what the girls were reading. And so it was like a cold reading. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I like went in like by my car and I was just like trying to study like a cold read, something I'm just looking at for the first first time in like five minutes I have to look at it. So I, they call me in, I do the audition. They do another round of eliminations. I got to stay all to say that it ended up just being 10 people left. Um, I was one. Yay. And then this was the <laughs> hardest part. They, they, they had, they brought five of us in at a time. I was part of the first group and they had, it was all of us that got casted except for, I think Jason, it wasn't Jason. It was a different guy for red. And they asked us questions like, tell us a little bit about yourself. And I was literally like, this is where I'm going to mess this up. And I just got, I got really nervous because now they're talking to me. It's fun to hide behind a character, but now you want to know about me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what kind of martial arts experience do you have? I'm like, I watch wrestling. <laughs> wrestling <laughs> yeah. that count? There were no laughs. I was like, oh, oh God, this is, this is not going well. A meantime, everyone, I'm a dancer. I'm a black belt. I'm a brown. I was like, oh, yeah, I watch wrestling. And Billy Blank's Tybo. I can do that. They were like, hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. So they sent us away. And then they called everybody in at least two times, except for me. I was done. I knew I blew it. And I was like, this is too good to be true. Um, this is the story of my life. You get this close, so close, but so far away. I was devastated. So they come out and they're like, all right, uh, thank you all for spending your day with us, but um, we're going to go ahead and uh, let you guys know. We'll let your agents know. So they didn't even tell us right then and there. And I remember that drive home. I was just devastated. I was like, I blew it. Oh, it's too oh, good to be no. true. Oh, my God. I was devastated. But then um, 
two, like two weeks later, I did get the call and it was like the best phone call ever. I was like, ah! I did the scream. I was like, <laughs> and then I just like ran around the house and I just felt so cool. Like I was cool. And I remember that Halloween just feeling like every kid that came to the house, I was like, yeah, I'm like the yellow, the next yellow power rate. I just felt so powerful. But yeah, I, I I don't know. It was it was amazing. It was such a great experience. What a great oh. Oh, story. I, I I see it like it was just yesterday. It was crazy. Good times. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I I can I can sympathize with so much of that. Um, I got I got to do an interview with a, a voice actor recently. Oh. And it was uh, it was our Bruce Elliott. He voiced uh, Whitebeard in the One Piece anime, Makarov and Fairy Tale, and uh, Commander Pixis in Attack on Titan, which was my favorite character from that show. Oh, no. He was absolute an absolute wonderful person, absolute just the nicest man. But he gave me his agent's info information. Said if you want to do an interview, I'm totally up for it. Uh, just contact this person. I was like, mm -hmm. cool. So I messaged them and they're like, all right, that sounds interesting. Send us your, your analytics and your, um, your social media. And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, nope. This, this is where they say I'm not a big enough show. Uh, pleasure doing business with you. And ironically enough, uh, because I feel like you'd appreciate this part of the story. One of my friends from our, uh, our D and D show, I had just not even a week before this email interviewed Steve Cardenas and oh he, wow. And he messaged me and he goes, Jay, you interviewed a Power Ranger. You can do this. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I was like, you know what? You're and I I sent everything that I had. I answered every question I could for them. And I didn't hear back. And I was like, well, oh, there it was. Yeah. It game over. And then roughly, roughly around the time of J1, I got I got hey, the email. Almost. Hey, wow. Bruce is available. Uh, Bruce is interested. He's not available for this time, so we'll message you in the future. And I was like, "Oh my god, it worked!" Wow, that is crazy because that that wasn't too long ago then. No, wow. no, it was uh, the interview was only a few weeks ago, but the the email was uh, October November time frame. Oh wow! Uh, so that yeah. Was a good day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Oh man. Um, but no, I, I know exactly that feeling of, well, this is it. Uh, I've done all I can pleasure doing business. Right. Like that's all you could do. Put your heart out there and let God do the rest. I'm telling you, you just oh, never absolutely. know. Okay? Don't give up. <laughs> absolutely. So saying, saying is how you, you clicked with Kevin and Michael so early. Um, yeah. How was the interaction with the rest of the cast? Because oh, I I I saw you guys at a at a panel, all six of you, mm -hmm. and it seemed like you guys just all were basically a family, um, yeah. bunch of brothers and sisters uh, yeah. from the show. What was that like on set? The oh, the five of you that became the six of you. Yes, yes. Oh no, it's what you see is what you get. We legit clicked from day one. Um, I, I, it, it's so crazy too, cause it, this was like, um, my first time having like a cast cast and like, this isn't a one time gig where, okay, thank you. It was a little day spot and you leave and that's the end. You go on to your next thing. This is, these are your peeps. Like we're going through the journey together and I don't know what it is and what, what, if it was like the casting or like. I, it, it was like they just knew how to put these people together and that it was going to just work um all different personalities but it works it's like just like kind of like our characters a little bit I mean a little bit to some degree um but yeah like I remember meeting everyone the at the fitting mm -hmm. because we had gotten you know all casted and we had this whole itinerary of like what we were going to do including um martial arts training which I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna learn how to actually be a power ranger oh my god but we were very supportive of one another and I remember meeting them all like I learned who got casted like officially at the fitting and it was just so great like we clicked immediately like Michael Kevin and I we, we kind of the three of us 
always kind of hung out. Even like when we weren't working, we would be going out afterwards, just hanging out, going to, uh, gosh, because we were in Valencia where we filmed. But we would go down to like, um, gosh, the areas, oh, gosh, I can't remember those so long ago, but like it's one of those fun areas downtown. I, I don't know, but we were like brothers and sister. And Aaron and Jason were like, it's so funny because I'm older than Aaron, but yet she always had this maturity big sister quality and Jason big brother quality. And we respected them so much, like as leader, like it just was like, it just, we kind of all fell in line as to like how the characters and the, and real life, like it just was crazy, but a very like amazing chemistry. And I think gratitude had a lot to do with it. We were all so grateful to just be casted and on this TV show. And we took it very seriously. Um, and I think what helped was not, having access to like social media back then it was very um we had each other and that's all we were working 12 hour days here and there back to back very supportive of one another laughing joking having a ball like it just wasn't work it was we would be like okay it's time to play like that's what we would say we, not time to work it's time to play like we would you know I was always one of the first ones uh, um at the uh my call time was like the earliest one because of my hair they were like, okay, 4.30 a.m., yay. So I was always oh, no. first. And then Kevin also had an early call time to get because like- his the green gem. hair in the gym. Totally. Yep. The gem, like that was his thing. Oh my gosh. So the two of us would always just kind of be in the hair and makeup chair together. Total family. Like his family, like his actual family was like my family. Kevin, we, we would hang out all the time. Like it was crazy. Like- what a journey that was. Like, literally, we were family. So, I mean, I don't know how the other cast worked out, but I know for sure we were very tight with one another. And um, we treated everyone with just so much love and respect. And again, for me, being having started off as like a extra to co-star, guest star, like I've learned the ropes and I see the hierarchy of how some people get treated because they're up on a pedestal because they're the star or whatever. That didn't happen on our show. Anybody that came on was welcomed um, like as if this was their moment. And we just loved them. We loved our extras. They were reoccurring extras. We were friends with everybody. We, oh, and Aaron was just such a light of love, you know, and I think that was contagious too. Like great leadership. Like, I don't know. Like it, we were just, it was just a great season. It, it, it was meant to be like, I'm so grateful for the season that I got the, 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 it just the cast was fabulous and we had the best time we really truly did I'm not even just saying that and it's so funny because years later like we can go decades without talking and we'll click like as if it was just yesterday with one little comic-con brings us back together and we can just be on a panel and just bounce off of each other and it's just like back how it was over 20 something years ago <laughs> Uh, tr trust me, I I was I was rewatching uh, a couple of the the older episodes just yeah. just to get ready for the interview. Aww. And they're like, "Oh, welcome to the year 2000." I was like, "Oh, wow!" I know my stomach. I was like, "Oh my god!" I remember that was a big deal. Two thousand. Right. Now I'm like, I can't. Oh my gosh, I yeah, I can't. It's like, <laughs> oh, what just happened? But yeah, it's it's great to look back, but then it's like, wow. Wow, it's Crazy. been that long. Yeah, <laughs> it has been that long. Yeah. So speaking of, uh, you know, s stars that came on the show, ah. I, I got to ask this question personally because I got to actually meet him before any of the Rangers, and I didn't realize that Rancid and these other characters were the same people. What was it like working with Vernon Wells? Oh my gosh, Be absolute delight. I was a huge fan of Vernon. So when I saw that he was out on our show and he was the villain, I was so excited. Um, weird science. I mean, I remember watching that as, you know, very young and just being like, oh my gosh, his character stood out to me. Um, and just the accent and all of that. And now he's on our show and he was the sweetest guy, super scary. Like he played that, he played Rancic really well. And oh, yeah. just so sweet. And every time we got to work with him, it was an honor. And just his background of just his work and who he is, it was just so wonderful to know that we had such really cool actors on our show. Like I was like, oh my gosh. But he was like, yeah, like, um, 
it's such a gentle giant. Um, he was always just cuddling and just like he was Papa. He was Papa Bear. To this day, I call him Daddy. I'm like Daddy. <laughs> He's so cute. I love Vernon. Yeah, amazing. That, that is and don't amazing. Me, Kate Sheldon, amazing. Like <laughs> she was so funny, and that she, uh, they did such a great job on casting. Uh, it just was amazing. Like they, yeah, I, I, I don't know, like what a great season that was. It was so much fun. Yeah. Oh no, a absolutely. Just, uh, just what, like I said, watching back, just realizing how good the show was and how like, oh yeah, this is why I loved it so much. Oh, um, <laughs> so with, with the show, with all of these crazy things going on, what were some of your favorite moments from the show that either a your character got to do or just b happened on the show in general? Oh my gosh, there were so many things that were going on. Um, let's see. I know I have stories for days. I do. Um, oh boy, <clears throat> we well, I always talk about our set visits when um we would have Make a Wish Foundation, uh guests come we would always get like a notice um hey you have a set visit today what an incredible humbling opportunity that these people their their final wish as they are exiting this life was to meet the power rangers what like i can't compete with that like what can nothing can compete with that and it would just be so um just unreal really to know that this is you know, these people are looking up to you and they got to sit and watch and you want to do your very best and, and just, um, gosh, I, I it, it just, it very humbling times and very near and dear to my heart. Like Aaron and I, we would, that was like, we would be just so emotional, just, uh, getting to meet these wonderful people that would just come out of their way to just see us do what we do. Um, we had some interesting set visits. Um, I, I don't know, people probably know about this, but Robert De Niro's children, were among some of the set visits that we had. And I think he was filming Showtime. There was a movie called Showtime around oh, okay. that time. Yeah. yeah, we were, we were, gosh, I remember filming in downtown LA, I think was when they came to visit. He had two twin boys and, oh my gosh, they, they were awesome. Like, it was great to like, I think we were doing the reunion episode because I, I have a memory, like my memories jumble up. Like I'll have memories of certain things. And it's funny because I'll watch some episodes and I'll go back into the memory of what was happening while we were filming in that particular day. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember that. Oh, we were trying to laugh here. And oh, I have so many stories, like just of things I can remember. Um, but that was really cool to have certain set visits. Um, Unreal. Um, oh gosh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of anything in particular. Uh, we very few times would I, I recall having like our our focus episodes, um, I, which were always really fun to do. Um, I really had a lot of fun doing full exposure. One of my favorite episodes, uh, just the storyline, because I always felt like Katie was. Clark Kent Superman kind of thing you know she's got this this strength but yet it's just everything's concealed you know time force we were all very we were hiding the clock tower everything was very just secretive and that character Mitch was just trying gunning for us trying to expose our identities and uh, we had such fun um filming this scene in the elevator boy the, this our special effects team were just awesome like our props guys and there was a moment where I'm holding on to like the rope of the elevator and smoke is coming from my hands. They actually had a straw. Like I had a straw in my hand and one of the props guys was like blowing smoke through there to make it look like <laughs> Katie was working really hard and they had wind. I had a Beyonce moment. My hair was going <laughs> off. It was so much fun. <laughs> I loved it. And, um, <clears throat> And just like running down, oh gosh, but that was actually kind of tragic too, because that episode got, you know, they had to like not replay it so often just because it was around the time of 9-11, which happened after that. And so a lot of our episodes, they they couldn't replay because in that episode, there's a helicopter that smashes into the building that I'm in. So yeah, that was, that was really rough and hard and bad timing. I mean, we didn't know. We filmed it before, of course, the event, but- yeah, things like that just kind of were, you know, we had a lot of tragedies happened during our season. Lost the original Yellow Ranger, 
um, yeah, during that year. Um, I think one of our episodes has a tribute to her. Uh, so yeah, we had a really, it was a wonderful time, but it was lots of unfortunate things happened at the same time. It was like, oh, bittersweet, I guess you could say, but yeah, memories for days. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, I yeah. tr trust me. I've, I have, you know, plenty of memories of, you know, trying to wake up to, to make sure I catch the, the episodes that were on at the time. Yeah. Um, what yeah. was it like? Cause I know we talked a little bit about the cast. What was it like? um jumping from the show and uh jumping forward in the future <laughs> ironic uh uh -huh. jumping forward in the future to starting to do con appearances oh my gosh that was crazy so let me tell you um again back in my day we didn't have the social medias we didn't have like i didn't even think we had fans i remember like um looking like trying to like back when the internet barely became like it was like we had those big computers mm -hmm. I type things up and just try to see something some type of ratings like are people watching us do people even like this very hard to find anything so I remember one day um this was a few years after my season I got a call from one of our stuntmen um Terrence um we would call him TJ he calls me and was like you have to come down here there's a girl dressed like you I'm like what like yeah there's uh you have to come down I didn't know what cosplaying was I didn't know anything <laughs> about that I was like what does that even mean you have to come down you have to go okay so I remember telling Kevin because I think it was around his birthday too if I'm not mistaken because I was like Kevin come with me I didn't want to go by myself and this was this turned out to be the original or the very first power uh uh, what is it? Power Morphicon. Oh, and okay. Yes. 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 The very first uh, one ever. Haven't gotten to go yet, but intend to. It's very exciting. Oh, you haven't that. been. Not oh, yet. Not that yet. Is... But we, um, my Ooh, my okay. brother, uh, who's who's part of some of our other shows, me and him have talked about it before um, because, um, oh my goodness, I only know her cosplay name. Um, oh. Lady J, who introduced Lady the two J! of us. Yes, yes. I love her. I will remember her name later, and I'm very sorry that I'm blanking on it oh, right Jamila. now. Jamila. Yes, thank you. Um, she introduced, uh, she was the one that introduced us to us, but she told me about Power Morphicon. And really? I was like, well, this is a thing. And I immediately sent to him, and he goes, all right, so we're going. It's just, when are we going? <laughs> then, oh, my gosh, you have to experience it. Um, it's a dream. I mean, you're talking from rangers to villains to writers to director like you name it it's power ranger power ranger power ranger it's everything it's a genius it was a genius creation invention like wonderful but so all to say okay so i didn't know anything about this yes i'm rolling up i don't even know what a comic-con is <laughs> so kevin and i were clueless mm -hmm. and very very katie very trip and so we're like <laughs> We roll into this thing. Again, we didn't even know we had fans because what we had, we had like LA times back then. And um, yay, uh, Power Rangers is back in the ratings. That's all we knew. We didn't know people were watching us. We would get fan mail from like prison, like prisoners and like random stuff. But this was so weird. So we go in and I remember walking into, I think it was a panel where the stuntmen were like, be, they were speaking. And there were people standing and listening to what they were talking about. And Kevin and I sneak in and I made eye contact with uh, like two of my, um, with some of the stunt guys, like they were family. They were part of our crew. Like they were amazing. They got us prepared to be Power Rangers. They are the talent. They are the Rangers. I'm sorry, as far as I'm concerned, like they are amazing. And so they saw me and they're like, whatever they were talking about, they're like, um, well, guess who just walked in or whatever they said, they're like, they introduce us like in front of all those people and everyone turns and we're standing in the crowd and there were people that were like what and they were freaking out and I was like hi like it just I was like do you even know who I am like this is so weird and so we just we were so blown away and we were just hanging out and seeing all this fun stuff and I saw this girl dressed as Katie in the little white time force outfit and she was excited and we took pictures together and it was mad. So I was like, this is so cool. So it was one of those things where we kind of crashed it. We weren't really guests. We weren't invited. We were just 
hey, let's check this out. And it was just the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I didn't know that this was a thing. So, totally clueless. So years later, um, I'm living my best life, just regular little old me, just living my life like a normal person. And that's when I, and I had lost touch with everyone because I'm, I'm one of those where I, I can't, I kind of, I'm kind of hard, hard, hard to get in touch with. Like I can just disappear and just, cause I'm not really into the social media and like, ah, oh, I'm like not in the mix, but Erin found a way to get a hold of me. Um, and she just reached out and was like, Hey, is this Deb? And I'm like, yes, is this Erin? We had like our own little mini reunion. And she's like, they are trying to do like a time force reunion. It was in Texas. And at this time, my son was only like one years old. Oh. I hate flying. I'm not, I'm, I don't like attention. I don't really do crowds. Like I'm, that's like my worst nightmare, like in my head. So I'm thinking there's no way I'm doing this. Um, there's no way. <laughs> so I remember she gave me the promoter's information and was very just like, Hey, if you want to great, but they're trying to get everybody, to, everyone together. So I, on my own time, just reached out to the promoter and he started telling me how th these fans are really into, you know, they're, you have fans. And I'm like, I do. I'm like, really? I do. Look, I, I hadn't even told my son about Power Rangers. He was only one. But still, it was not like I was. Yeah, I just what? Like, it just was so crazy. So talking to the promoter, he was able to kind of talk me into it. And so they were like, hey, we could bring the whole family. I'm like, really? They got me to come. And so I went and I was so overwhelmed by what I experienced and couldn't believe that people were just coming from all over and just the stories that they were telling me and how they were watching me. And it's just crazy to even think because I remember filming and not thinking anyone was watching us like, OK, maybe some kids are. But who wakes up at six in the morning or whatever time it was like, who's going to watch this? Like, and I just people well, were coming. Well, I know up one and, ginger kid that what a, that was there. Whether oh. he was watching it by himself or not, but he was he was there watching Time Force every really? chance he got. <laughs> wow, that's crazy to me. Like I I just couldn't I didn't get it. And and actually, I'm kind of glad I was clueless because it it kept us all very humble. And I think that's why our cast was so just we didn't know we just we were working really hard harder than the typical seasons because we there was a sag strike we had every bad thing that was going on you could name it was just like we there was a short strike going on at the time so i remember something about them having to expedite like so we had to film longer hours so we were so focused on what we were doing that we weren't really aware of who was watching it and how well it was doing so by the time i'm doing comic cons i was like oh emotional I was crying I was like this isn't real I couldn't believe what was happening and people were telling me some stories and things that I heard and how watching the show prevented certain things and oh I just was overwhelmed I was truly overwhelmed by it that's why I don't really do a whole lot because it is so emotionally overwhelming and I want to um really I'm more about the quality than the quantity um I don't want to like ever take this for granted and just be like, here, let me just keep going. And then just, it becomes just a thing. Like, this is so special to me that it's like, I prepare for these comic cons. Like I, I do, I prepare the mind, the body, the soul, because it's like, <laughs> this is, this doesn't happen every day, especially when you're living a normal life. You know, I don't live a life where I have Power Ranger written on my forehead, you know, like my son doesn't have, his friends aren't like, can we meet Katie? Like, they don't know. Like, I don't, announce it it's very I live a very normal life when it does come up though let me tell you because I've learned my lesson like <laughs> yeah, learned my lesson I have because right after Rangers so I've retired from the business multiple times and when I retired the first time I was like I think I'm gonna go back to school and take some classes and I did I I enjoyed just kind of like earning things and working for things and just like not just being like I'm going on set and just making money playing. Like it was fun to actually earn things and work for things and kind of like, but see, here's the thing. I learned my lesson because I would be taking a normal class and they would be like, tell us a fun fact about yourself. You know, like when you first start your first day and everybody tells a fun fact, man, the biggest mistake of my life. And I, I learned my lesson that day. I was like, well, I used to be a Power Ranger on the TV show. They, everyone was like, what? And I was like, <laughs> oh no. 
it immediately changed things. And I didn't like that. I actually, I, cause I, I really cherish the times of being on the show and it's so special to me that it, it, it has to be a separate thing, but I didn't like the fact that people knew this about me before knowing me. And I could see the difference of like how people would interact with me. Either they were, they would look at me differently or have expectations and maybe I would disappoint them because I was so down to earth that it was like, really? Like, I, I don't know, but I didn't like it. So I started to not tell people anymore. And I liked earning like, or building real authentic connections and relationships with people. And then of course, you know, obviously when you are hanging out with somebody and you become friends, like eventually it might come out here and there just because it's like, yeah, I got to go out of town. Well, where are you going? Um, I'm going some random place well, to do what? Well, I, I get to meet some people on a, you know, show I did. What, what show? It just comes out. And then it's like, it, sometimes it makes things great. Sometimes it's like, it changes things. So I'm Clark Kent and Superman. I'm telling you, it's like a real, like, it's a real thing. So yeah, all that to say, um, yeah, like when I do these things, I take it very seriously because it is such a special time in my life that I want to cherish every moment of it because I know once it's over, I become a pumpkin again. No I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't mind being a pumpkin every once in a while. It keeps me grounded in life. It's all good. It's fun. <laughs> no, uh, I, I promise I'll try to keep my time for story till the end to not overwhelm oh you because no, I, I, I love it. Cause well, time force, <clears throat> sorry. Time force is really special to me because like you said, there wasn't a lot of social media back then. Um, so what Time Force was is me and one of my friends uh, growing up, we both watched it. So whenever we'd watch it on Saturday, we'd come to school on Monday. Oh, my gosh, did you see this? Oh, my gosh, when this happened? And we oh. would, uh, you know, we would geek out over Power Rangers. Well, Time yeah. Force was the last season that we got to watch together until oh. he moved to a different town. Oh. And so Time Force was like the last season that me and him connected over. So not only was it an amazing season, but it was also like really emotionally like uh, like a real emotional season for yeah. me. And luckily, oh. now that, you know, uh, social media is a thing, we've easily found each other. I messaged him that I got to do this interview and he freaked out. He's oh, like, God. oh, my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> but that's that's why What's his time, name uh, his, his name's name? paul hi paul okay i just a shout out oh wow. don't worry when i send that to him he'll freak out he's like oh my god a power ranger knows my name that's crazy to me <laughs> yeah but i'm honored at the same time <laughs> it's so wild <laughs> so that that's why time force is uh extra special to me oh. is because that was it was such a it meant so much at the time and it still means that much now. Uh, so getting the chance to a interview you and be the fact that I've gotten to meet uh, all of the Rangers. I honestly, now that I'm doing the math, I think you and Kevin were the last two that I got to meet. Cause I wow. got to meet Jason and Aaron. They were at a con together. Then Michael was at the same con the next year, just by himself. And then you two showed up. Oh. I think, um, Oh my gosh! I just know his in, name. Uh, was it Philadelphia? Was it? Uh... It was um Lexington. Oh, Lexington yes. That is yes. right. Oh my gosh! I have such memories of Lexington. It was so crazy and amazing. Oh my god! That's where I met you. Was Lexington? Yes, that's where you met me for the first time. Yes. Okay. Okay. The first time. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and then reunited at J one, which is yes, at J one. Oh my gosh, that was great, especially with the wrestling thing because I had the whole yes. wrestling in there. And then you were telling me like you had connections with wrestling. I forgot what that was about. Like with uh, some of the wrestlers there. Yes. You knew that. So, so I I I can I can more than happily clear that up. <laughs> oh my now, god. Now I'm you know geeking out because I get to tell my story. Yes. Um, oh my god. No. Now here comes my fangirling. <laughs> <laughs> so um I am a wrestler. Everyone <gasps> who watches the show usually knows that. Um but speaking of Power Rangers uh, my wrestling gear is inspired by the original Red Ranger. Yes. So I go by the name The Lost Ranger, Jay Kirby. Oh. 
Um, oh my gosh, that's so great. Yes. Um, and we because I think you asked a question about the the cosplay wrestling while we <laughs> like it was like in the background, and you're like, yeah. Oh yeah, I totally know most of those guys standing over there because I was a wrestler in in New Jersey at the time. Well, I was a wrestler in New Jersey. I recently moved, but um, yeah, you, you start asking and I was like, Oh no, I, I wrestle here and there. I wrestle under this character. And the best part of this story, cause I didn't get to tell you this afterwards. You got busy and I would never want to bother you at your table, oh, but you, you asked me if I'm face or heel. And usually when I wrestle under, you know, Power Ranger gear, I'm a face. But for yeah. at that time, I had been a heel for two, almost three years. Why? And while while I was telling you that I was a heel and that I was absolutely despicable, like Rancid would be uh, oh. proud of me with some of the things that I've wow. done. Um, uh -oh. The guy who beat me for my title and was my last match in oh. front of a crowd in New Jersey walked over almost like perfectly timed. And I went, and that guy beat me for the belt and he walked right up to you and you, you fangirled out. Oh, my and just the fact that that was the person that walked over while we were having this conversation that one of the, one of the best people that I've ever met in wrestling, his name's Tony Cheney. He's done a couple interviews for me, but he was the guy who beat me for the title Really? just yeah. appeared out of thin air was wow. too perfect that was perfect okay meant to be and now i'm fangirling oh my gosh okay <laughs> that's so wild and, and then i i <clears throat> sorry i'm getting excited talking and telling the story but then i, I got to see you um do yeah. the uh the spot at the end of the cosplay wrestling with the uh, the the tag champs beating up oh, the manager, and my, you got to get in the ring. Gosh, that was a dream and a bucket list fulfilled. <laughs> I was so nervous, and believe me, I was not expecting to even be a part of that. I was just minding my own little business. Um, they started doing like I was very impressed with all the matches. Like I was when I saw the ring there. I think the first night we were there, I'm thinking, oh, they have a wrestling ring thinking that maybe cosplayers were just going to play around in there. Maybe it was just like, you know, a design. Like, it's like, oh, this, we just have a ring in here. I did not expect a, a an incredible show. And so when it started, I was like, okay, everyone. I had like, there was a couple of fans that were like hanging out at my table. I'm like, we're going to go watch this. So we all went together and we're like in the front row, just heckling and shouting and screaming and just having fun like a real wrestling experience and I just loved it the sound of the ring oh all of it is just like a dream my son got to see it and I was just like having the best time so after that one match we saw I was just I had my helmet with me not to be like hi everybody I'm Katie but like I just had it I just was holding it and um I was walking towards the back trying to find my son mm -hmm. and I got stopped or like I saw the wrestlers hanging out and I was like and I just had to like give mad respect for like what you guys all do. And just like, I was like, oh, so I was ch chatting with them. And then I guess the guy that was a manager to some of the wrestlers, he like literally was like, would you like to walk down with us? Uh, what? Oh, for sure. I, in my brain, I was like, yes. But in my, like, there was another side of me that was like, this is, I'm going to embarrass myself. Like I'm going <laughs> to fall. I'm, gonna, I'm so uncoordinated. This is like, it's a bucket list dream, but I can't, I can't do this. Katie's like, that's, she was goofy. Like, that's why I was throwing people out of cars. Like I wasn't a fighter. I, love I wish scene, I was. By the way. I, um, <laughs> like, like being a power ranger was like the next best thing to being a wrestler because I could never do it. So I was like, but, oh my gosh, but like being, um, a diva that I'm like I can do that I can be a di oh those divas oh that that was another dream I'm like oh my gosh like I and I don't mind getting tossed around here and there that would be fun I didn't mind but so I so all this to say it was like a last minute decision and I was like yes I heard myself say yes but in my brain I was like are you sure this could be the most embarrassing thing you've ever done in your life but I was like you're gonna do it oh my gosh and at that time my son and my husband were nowhere to be found like they were somewhere else and I'm like <laughs> there was no one no there to talk you out of it 
not real. Like, this is the moment. Where is my family to see this? And so I'm like, let's go. I'm like, when? Right now? Right now? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh. So I don't know even. It was a blur. It was a blur to me. And I just was in heaven. And oh, and I'm walking. I felt so cool. And I'm like trying to, don't fall. Don't trip. Don't fall. That ring is bouncy. I didn't realize how bouncy it was. I was like, I'm going to fall just standing in here. And then, oh my gosh, when they, at the end, when they were like, well, I, I obviously went, it was like just the intro and then I left and I left and I was just in shock. So I actually left, left, just walking around in a daze. Like, did I just do that? Then I saw my husband. I'm like, you're not going to believe what I just did. He's like, what? And so we walked back. We were like front um, in the ringside, like just kind of standing there, just shouting and booing and doing all that fun stuff being dramatic you know I'm like yes like this is so cool I'm living my dream this is so I, what's happening right now and then it's over and he calls me back in again and I was like yes I'm like no okay okay all right I got this and I come in acting like I know what I'm doing and I'm just and he they like led me they I felt so safe and just it was like is this how it goes I could do this for a living forget <laughs> Power Rangers I'm a wrestler now let's go I'll be your manager. I will be your diva. Let's travel the world and just do this. This is amazing. So I go in there and next thing you know, they have me dancing and put my foot on this guy. I'm trying to fall. And I pin, I don't know if the match was over, I think, <laughs> but I felt like I pinned the guy. I was like, <laughs> I, felt so cool. I think there was a ref there. I I, I saw a three count and when the, <laughs> the ref hit three, the, the crowd popped. So oh, uh, oh, oh my gosh, that was wild. What a dream. That's like honestly, wrestling was what got me so excited about Power Rangers because I know I could never be a wrestler. So <laughs> let me be a superhero in my own right. And believe me, whenever we would work with second unit, which is like the when we were out with the explosions and we were out in the field and we weren't like on set, but we just out in the fields and with the um, helmet heads and just like stunt men and the explosions and all that. I felt like a wrestler. I was like, yes, I got in my inner Hulk Hogan. I, I got my inner rock. It just was like, yes. Like I felt so powerful and it's all because of wrestling. Wrestling really, really, really inspired me to, just get into the theatrics. Oh my God. I met Sergeant Slaughter um, in, uh, where was I? Texas recently at a Comic-Con and I nearly had a heart attack. I couldn't. And so I'm <laughs> telling you, I fan girl with wrestlers like Mick Foley. When I met him, I, I, I scared Diamond Dallas Page. Oops. Like <laughs> I, I did. Actually, I scared Mick Foley too. Like in the elevator. I was like, oh. and then I look at his di Diamond Dallas Page. I'm like, and they're just laughing at me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. But like, I just geek out when it comes to wrestling. Like they have no idea how much I admire you. Yeah, you wrestle. Like <laughs> that's just, you guys sacrifice your bodies. It's wild, like what you guys do, but it's really amazing. And I'm a huge fan. So now I'm fangirling over you. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, full circle. What, what well, is that this? Well, now it's on video and no one will ever, you know, no one can deny it. I uh, know. I did it. <laughs> I, I, I did it. I was in a ring. I was in a ring. Like, I've always wanted to, like, even just go through the ropes, like a little lady, like Miss Elizabeth. Like, it was incredible. What a dream. What a dream. And, I, and thank you for sending me the video because I was like, I don't know if anybody captured it. And you sent it to me. And I was like, oh, it's amazing. So. No, um, no. no <laughs> no, they they truly do. Uh, if, having having a Power Ranger on my show is a dream. So like oh, it it truly oh my, does. That's crazy. Um, oh my god! But no, crazy. it it is funny that you that you got that moment because I I like I said I do know some of those guys in the in the oh, wrestling. Um, so, so you you were in. You were in good hands as far as that that uh that group of guys. So I'm I mean, glad that I, they could help uh they, help you live that dream. They did, and they were very just so sweet and gentle about it. And they were really like I was really intimidated by them. I'm like they're gonna think I'm just the biggest dork and like what it, why why are we doing this? But they were so sweet. I got to chat with them afterwards and. They were great. They were great. Like, honestly, I would totally do it again. I'm not even playing. I would do it again. I would do it again. I said it. You heard it. I would do it again. Let me know. Let's go travel. Come on. You got your manager here. I'll turn it on. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Madness. Yeah. Good uh, stuff. Woo. Uh, catch my breath here. Also, shout out to James Gray and uh, Frankie Picard. 
because I know that I'm going to send this to them later and they're going to they're going to appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. The greatest. I had so much fun. And again, I'm just the worst with social media. Like I I I know I know I I miss a lot of opportunities because of that. Even like going to Comic Cons. I'm just not one to self-promote and post and keep up with all that it just overwhelms me like I'm like a wild card you get me when you can like I'm thank you for reaching out to Jamila because I don't know if this would have ever happened I'm like oh. I'm, I'm just not good at like yeah keeping up with stuff I live oh, I, I don't know how many favors I owe her for this but it's oh, it's worth it <laughs> she's a doll I absolutely adore her my family and I we we recruited her she's a member of our family now wow oh. Uh, yeah. sh shout out to her and shout out to Ranger Station because she did say that I uh, I I need to push her stuff so I will never not push and Ranger honestly, Station. Wow, one of the greatest times ever! Like I I they they took Ranger Station. It was so much. That is so funny because I hadn't done Comic Cons in a long time. So Ranger Station was one of my first times kind of coming back into Comic Cons because I had taken a break for quite some time. And, you know, of course, with COVID and everything, I think I had done Power Morphicon, but then after that, it was like I wasn't doing anything. And so mm -hmm. I did meet her, I think, at Power Morphicon. As, and that's when she had told me about that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was tipped, I was kind of like, because I don't really do a lot, but wow, what a wonderful way to like jump back into it. And it kind of got me excited to like, so yeah, good stuff. Good experience. Very good. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll start winding down here. Is there anything you'd like to say to, to the fans, to the internet? No, that you're not big on social media. So I will share this no. to everyone oh, uh, so they you. can you know get your message but is there anything you'd like to say to the fans or uh, anyone that you know watched the show or got to meet you at a con well oh my gosh I there's no words to really describe my love for each and every one of our supporters our fans out there um it's so funny because when I started Facebook um I had to like well I made this video because well Okay. There, there was there was a catfish that was pretending to be me for God knows how long because I don't do social media and I couldn't even like get my own name on Facebook. I had to like put fan page on it. And so I, I made this little video, one of my first videos ever. And I meant it. Like I was actually watching it the other day and I'm like, I meant every word of that. And I was like crying because it was so genuine. Like I don't do social media. I don't, I mean, I will if I have to, but I, 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 I would rather do this. Like this is connection. This is like the one-on-ones. I love to meet and greet people in real life. I want to have that time. I appreciate each and every person who took the time to go out of their way to like meet me. Like, who am I? Like what a wonderful fandom we have. And it was, it's, it, it has inspired me to do more like interviews and even more social media type stuff that I'm not comfortable with. But if it's to reach those that, have supported the show and the franchise for all these years. It's so worth it. Um, they are the reason why the show is still on. You know, we are nothing without them. We are why they are why we do Comic Cons. Um, so I don't know. I there's no words to really just express like my absolute gratitude and love for anyone and everyone who has been fans of the show and just you know even tuning into this like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I actually am wearing uh, this little Katie Bear hug bracelet that, um, you know, when I go to cons, I'm like, am I doing this wrong? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like, um, but like, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I wanted to like give a thank you. Like people go out of their way to just see me. So, you know, I wanted to like give back. And so I created this little bracelet, um, which is also, you know, it's a mental health awareness bracelet. Um, it has like a little heart on the inside with like a little hug on it. And uh, it's just like a little reminder to take care of yourself. You know, life is hard. Um, I'm truly honored that some a lot of the stories that I hear of people, Power Rangers changed my life and all these other things. And it's like, wow, like they make me feel like a real life superhero hearing some of these stories. And 
really, they truly are, you know, everything to me. So I, I just, I don't know, I adore the fandom and um, when I can get out there to, to do more appearances and cons, it's just such an honor and a pleasure to meet these folks that have kept our franchise alive after all these years. So I love each and every one of you. Um, and if I've never met you, God, I hope to one day. And uh, yeah, I got to get out there a little more because th there's just, we just have an incredible, incredible fan base. And truly on behalf of all the Rangers, thank you. Thank you. We wouldn't be doing any of these things if it weren't for you. So truly an honor and a pleasure. <laughs> well, Deborah, thank you so, so much for sitting down with me. It means the absolute world to me. It means the world to the show. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to do this interview. Uh, as always, follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, our YouTube channel. I'm trying to get more episodes on Spotify so you guys can listen uh, and not have to be on video the whole time. But uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. And uh, we'll see you guys here soon.